to session four of questions for Jesus. We talked last week about your emotional and your rational brain and how, your, how they react differently and how we can use your emotional brain to get down to our desires because the rational brain has these filters that filter out what comes from the depths of us, whereas our emotional side doesn't have that. So today I wanna to talk you through the process of how you move from emotion to desire. And just to note, the reason this is important is your behavior, a lot of it comes out of your desires and particularly often the things we most wanna change, the things that cause us the most problems are rooted in a deep seated desire that's not met. You know, you probably all know someone who greatly fears rejection and has put a shell around themselves. Or maybe you know someone who is living out of this hunger for approval or recognition or acceptance. And, and so they do all this weird stuff and they flatter you and they try to get you to pay attention to them. And we're all put off by that. That's an example of someone's unmet desire coming out in unhealthy ways. And the beauty of this approach of praying your desires is that it can change those kinds of behaviors that are really hard to get at. So that's why we're doing this. So let me talk about the process. When we're gonna drill down from an emotion to desire, we wanna start with a situation where you experienced a strong emotion. And that can be a positive, something wonderful happened, or that can be a bummer, or there was a conflict or whatever. But anything where you experience strong emotion can lead you to a desire. It can be a fight or it can be a party. So, and what we're gonna do in the coaching process is take them back to that situation. And often what I'll do as a coach is I'll say, so put yourself back into that situation. You're sitting across the table from the person. They've, they're telling you that you've won this award and you're gonna be recognized and they're thanking you for what you did. What emotion are you experiencing in that moment? And what I'm doing is I'm drawing a visual picture and inviting them into it. And the reason for that is the language of the emotional brain isn't words or concepts, it's images and metaphors. And so by drawing them a picture and having them visualize it, I'm activating their emotional brain. So what we're gonna do is invite them back into that experience and help them visualize it and feel the emotion of it. And the reason we do that is because of step two, which is we don't wanna identify how did you wanna to respond to that feeling. Now, we don't want, you know, the response that you actually did might be to the feeling, or it might be that your rational brain kicked in and said, uh, you don't wanna say that. <laughs> um, let's not explode here. How about if we say something more reasonable? So your rational brain will come in and filter what comes out of your heart, which sometimes is a really good thing. You know, if you're sitting across from your boss and you want to tell him exactly what you think, having that rational brain filters over your mouth is a really good thing in that moment. But in this process, what we want to do is get at what is this thing down inside of us that, that is rising up there? So we're gonna go over to the emotional side and say, when you're in that feeling, how did you wanna to respond to the feeling? It's the response to the feeling we want. And a common answer for that might be, I wanna hide or run away. I wanna get away from the situation that makes me feel this. Or maybe I wanna dive into it if it's a good feeling. Another common expression is, I wanna fight back, I wanna change the circumstance, I'm gonna push back at it. So the, the fight or flight responses are really common here. But we're gonna learn what did you wanna do in response to that feeling and the purpose of this, step two is for step three because your response is meant to give you your desire. So once I know your response, like I wanted to run away from the conflict, then what you say is, so if you were able to run away from the conflict, what would that give you? And what would that give you is what I call the desire question. It's the question that leads you from that response to the desire that's under it. And often what you'll do is, since people aren't familiar with the vocabulary of desire, you'll end up asking that question multiple times. So if you ran away, 
what would that give you? Well, I wouldn't have to be in the conflict anymore. Okay, and if you wouldn't have to be in the conflict anymore, what would that give you? Well, then I wouldn't have that awful feeling of being yelled at. Okay, and if you didn't have that awful feeling of yelled at, being yelled at, what would that give you? And maybe at that point they'd say, well, I'd, I'd feel safe. Okay, now we're getting down to a, a desire. So that desire question we're going to ask multiple times until the people start talking about what they really want. So that's our basic process. Start with the strong emotion, experience it, visualize it, live in it, and then ask, how do you want to respond to the emotion? And then that response leads us down to the desire when we use the desire question. What did that give you? So let me, I'm going to do a little demonstration here and show you how that works. So Sandra, what do you want to talk about today? Let's talk about, um, I had a, a recent thing happen where I felt a very strong emotion towards my husband. Okay. Um, the situation was, is he got in a conflict with another person mm -hmm. and he came home and kind of just like told me everything about it. And yeah. I felt like, why are you telling me all this? Like, this is your, not that I didn't want to hear it, but it just felt like he was just dumping all this fear on me. So I got... Like, I want to run away from you. I don't want to be around this right now. Okay. Yeah. Go, go on a little bit. Mm -hmm. And our first step in moving toward a desire is to take an emotion and unpack it. So mm -hmm. tell me a little more about, put yourself in that situation. Mm -hmm. You're sitting there across from your husband. He's telling you all this stuff. What's going on inside you? I just felt super angry. I felt... Um, I just felt really mad at him. I felt both like the conflict was making me frustrated of how he was handling it. And mm -hmm. I was feeling frustrated that like, I don't have any control <laughs> in this situation. And I'm not sure you want to know how I would handle it anyways. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you've mentioned, mm -hmm. talk, talk a little bit more mm -hmm. about the anger part of it. What, what are you feeling when you're angry? Um, I feel frustrated, um, impatient. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I feel like just wanting to run away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which, in that situation, mm -hmm. which of the, the two main emotions you mentioned were fear and anger? Which is mm -hmm. strongest for you there? Mm -hmm. It was, pro it was fear, I think, the fear and anger maybe went together a little bit, fear causing anger. Okay. Do you want to start with the fear? Sure. Or? Okay. Let's start with fear. Okay. So s s say mm -hmm. just a little bit more about when you're feeling afraid in that situation, what exactly are you feeling? What's, what's um, the fear like? Panic. Anxiety. Uh, okay out of control, um, like that sense yeah. of like everything's going to fall apart or our whole world's going to blow apart. Okay. Okay. Like irrational, totally. All right. Good. <laughs> so our, what I'm trying to do here is get the person to experience the feeling, to be in it, to, to, to put themselves in the situation again. And once they're in the emotion, then our next step is we want to, to ask them how they wanted to respond to the emotion. Mm. So it's not necessarily what they did, although sometimes it is. But when you're in that feeling, what did you want to do with the feeling? Mm. So when you're feeling the fear and the panic and that our life is going to blow up, mm -hmm. and what did you want to do? Isolate. Like run away? Yeah, like... run away, go by myself, not be around him or people. Okay. And if you, if you were able to run away and isolate, what mm -hmm. would that give you? Um, distance from mm -hmm. the problem. Okay. And if you had distance from the problem, what does that give you? Mm. Uh, safety. Okay. Feel secure. Or like I'm not in this big storm. I'm not. You're not mm -hmm. in the middle of mm -hmm. it and if you're not 
you're safe, you're not in the middle of it, what does that give you? Mm. Mm, protection, mm -hmm. a sense of being protected from something hard. Okay, and if you're protected from <laughs> something hard, what does that give you? Mm. Security. Mm -hmm. Okay. A safe feeling. Okay. So we're back around to, to the safety thing again. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned security, safety, protection. Mm -hmm. Are those the same thing? Is there one that's the safety, best name security, for it? Safety, mm -hmm. protection. Um, I think probably security. Mm -hmm. that, that sense of like everything is going to be okay mm -hmm. or you're taken care of or okay okay so that was a good demonstration of once we have them experience the emotion that's the first step we ask them how they want to respond to the emotion that's the second step and the third step is we ask the desire question what does that give you and usually what will happen is the first time you ask what does that give you um, most people don't know the desire language and mm -hmm. so you'll get a, you know, I wouldn't have to be in the problem. But as you keep asking, what will happen as you drill down farther and farther with that same question is you get to the place where the person starts to cycle around the same theme, and that's usually when you've gotten to the core desire. Mm -hmm.